Hello, I'm Dr. Simona Bartos. Today, let's discuss some acne myths that you may be believing. You may have heard that only teenagers have acne, and that is the farthest from the truth. We see actually many 20-year-olds, middle-aged, and even older women having a lot of hormonal acne, especially on the lower face, on the jaw and neck area. We see that very often in women suffering from PCOS, having some hair where we have to pluck and shave, but definitely we can have acne as an adult. The next myth is that when you have acne, the best thing to do is just go out in the sun, lay out, and the sun will simply dry it out. That again is a myth. While the sun has some beneficial effect for acne, we don't recommend it as a safe and effective treatment. Sun, as you also may know, increases your chances of getting uh, skin cancers, as well as fine lines and wrinkles, brown spots, and many other side effects. So we don't recommend laying in the sun to treat your acne as a safe and effective treatment. The next myth is that people with acne simply are not washing their face well enough or they are somewhat dirty. That is also not true. We know that actually many young people with acne over cleanse their skin. They scrub every day, they intensely exfoliate and use all kinds of chemicals on their face in, a, in an effort to get rid of the acne and the pustules that you see. So that's not true. People with acne are not more dirty or they are not deficient in their facial routines. As far as how often somebody with acne should wash their face is once or twice a day. If you feel that you're very oily, you should wash your face twice a day with a gentle cleanser, either a Cetaphil or CeraVe or a medicated cleanser if your physician prescribes something like benzoyl peroxide or any other medicated cleansers. But at least once a day is sufficient to wash your face. As far as scrubbing, we recommend uh, either very gentle scrubbing, maybe once a week or so, or not even scrubbing at all. When you have a lot of pustules and cysts and open and close comedones, uh, the more you scrub, you can irritate, you can spread the, the bacteria, and you can cause more harm than good. So gentle exfoliation about once a week or so. Another myth that is a personal pet peeve for me is when people insist that acne must be a sign of systemic inflammation. They say, doctor, there's something wrong with me. I feel it in my bones. There's something deep that's coming out. It's not just in my skin. And that is usually not the case. Very rarely do we test to see any other causes of systemic illness manifesting as acne, but for the most part, it's a disease of the skin, specifically the pilosebaceous unit, which is the hair and the glands and the surrounding structure of, around the hair follicle. So it's usually a disease of the skin. Yes, it can be severe, but it's not a sign of a systemic, deep, serious infection that should worry you. If the patient manifests any signs of PCOS or other hormonal uh, clues, we may do testing of their hormones or do basic lab tests for CBC, CMP, just to check their general health. But in general, it's not a sign of a systemic inflammatory or infectious condition. I often have mothers uh, of young women who come in and they want me to convince their daughter not to wear makeup because makeup for sure causes acne. And this is a mostly a false claim. Yes, if you use sponges that are very dirty or very expired, contaminated makeup, uh, it can flare your acne. But generally speaking, makeup that is applied well, that is washed off every night, that is not expired with clean instruments should not cause acne. So that's a myth. That being said, it's mandatory that you wash your face every night, even if you have to use makeup removal wipes. I know that's controversial, but just take it off, cleanse your skin before going to bed. Also, as much as possible, use non-comedogenic products, use simple, fewer products, and clean your instruments often. Also, try not to use expired products, and just listen to your skin. If you do something and it doesn't work for you, you flare, you have done something wrong, just listen to your skin, your body's trying to tell you something. Another myth that has been proven wrong for many, many years in our research and in our studies so far is the fact that taking antibiotics for acne for a few months really will have devastating side effects to the rest of your body because it kills off all of the good bacteria in your body. And while some of that may be true, the doses that we 
we recommend for acne are lower than the anti-infective dose that we use for infections. So we use, for example, doxycycline 50 milligrams instead of 100 or 200 for the anti-inflammatory effect because we're not necessarily wanting to kill off all of the bacteria, but to decrease the inflammation that is part of the acne pathology. So generally speaking, I keep a patient for two, three, four months on antibiotic and then they stop. Either you're better or you're not. If you're not better, you're going to Accutane or other stronger medications. If you're better, then we turn off the antibiotic and you continue your topical medications. I can go on a rant. <laughs> Some people believe that when you have acne, you should not moisturize your face because you're starting off being too oily as it is. Uh, therefore, the drier, the better. And that may be partially true, especially if you're a teenager with a lot of sebaceous, uh, oily complexion, uh, you may want to slow down the moisturizing. But when we give you a lot of active ingredients such as clindamycin, benzoyl peroxide, tretinoin, and other medications that do dry you out, you may have to moisturize your face at least once a day again with a light lotion cream that will give you just enough moisture to not have you crack and peel and feel uncomfortable while you are taking your medications so uh, mostly false um, again listen to your body talk to your doctor and you'll come up with the best recipe that will fit your particular need. Some people believe that eating greasy foods causes acne, and that is mostly false. Again, from many years of research studies, we actually see only two foods having some signal in causing acne, and that, believe it or not, is eating, drinking skim milk, and eating a excessive amount of sugary foods. So whole milk is okay, cheese and yogurt are okay. For some reason, only the skim milk caused that signal in the studies, while the sugar is controversial. Some studies show a positive effect, some people see no association. I always recommend a healthy, balanced diet for heart health and general health. But for acne specifically, we don't have those strong recommendations. We just say to patients to watch out if skin milk makes you flare and if eating sugary foods will make you flare. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna know what treatments I recommend to help acne. Also, please comment below and let me know your particular experience with changing your diet, changing your makeup, and any of the things that I mentioned below. Let me know if you have tried them, if you've had any problems, and what was your experience with them. Let's talk about it. Also, if you're in the South Florida area, we're open for business and would love to see you. Give us a call at 954-516-0722. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.